Hello, I'm Ken Johnson, and welcome to the New Hope Reads Ministry. We hope you will visit daily as we read from the Chronological Bible. May our time spent together in God's Word be a blessing to us all as God reveals Himself and His nature, as He opens our minds, and as He prepares our hearts for our good and His service. Again, thank you for joining us. February 25th, Redemption of Property, Leviticus 25, 24 through 34, 1445 through 1279 B.C. With any purchase of land, you must grant the seller the right to buy it back. If any of your fellow Israelites falls into poverty and is forced to sell some family land, then a close relative should buy it back for him. If there is no close relative to buy the land, but the person who sold it gets enough money to buy it back, he then has the right to redeem it from the one who bought it. The price of the plan will be discounted according to the number of years until the next year of Jubilee. In this way, the original owner can then return, uh, can then return to the land. But if the original owner cannot afford to buy back the land, it will remain with the new owner until the next year of Jubilee. In the Jubilee year, the land must be returned to the original owners so they can return to their family land. Anyone who sells a house inside a walled town has the right to buy it back for a full year after its sale. During that year, the seller retains the right to buy it back. But if it is not bought back within a year, the, house, the sale of the house within the walled town cannot be reversed. It will become the permanent property of the buyer. It will not be returned to the original owner in the year of Jubilee. But a house in a village, a settlement without fortified walls, will be treated like property in the countryside. Such a house may be bought back at any time, and it must be returned to the original owner in the year of Jubilee. The Levites always had the right to buy back a house they have sold within the towns allotted to them. And any property that is sold by the Levites, all houses within the Levitical towns, must be returned in the year of Jubilee. After all, the houses and the towns reserved for the Levites are the only property they own in all Israel. The open pasture land around the Levitical towns may never be sold. It is their permanent possession. Redemption of the poor and enslaved, Levit Leviticus 25, 35 through 55. If one of your fellow Israelites falls into poverty and cannot support themselves, support him as you would a foreigner or a temporary resident and allow him to live with you. Do not charge interest or make a profit at his expense. Instead, show your fear of God by letting him live with you as your relative. Remember, do not charge interest on money you lend him or make a profit on food you sell him. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt to give you, to, give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. If one of your fellow Israelites falls into poverty and is forced to sell himself to you, do not treat him as a slave. Treat him instead as a hired worker or as a temporary resident who lives with you, and he will serve you only until the year of Jubilee. At that time, he and his children will no longer be obligated to you, and they will return to their clans and go back to the land originally allotted to their ancestors. The people of Israel are my servants, whom I brought out of Egypt, so they may never be sold as slaves. Show your fear of God by not treating them harshly. However, you may purchase male and female slaves from among the nations around you. You may also purchase the children of temporary residents who live among you, including those who have been born in your land. You may treat them as your property, passing them on to your children as a permanent inheritance. You may treat them as slaves, but you may never treat your fellow Israelites this way. Suppose a foreigner or temporary resident becomes rich while living among you. 
If any of your fellow Israelites fall into poverty and are forced to sell themselves to such a foreigner or to a member of his family, they still retain the right to be bought back, even after they have been purchased. They may be bought back by a brother, an uncle, or a cousin. In fact, anyone from the extended family may buy them back. They may also redeem themselves as if as they have prospered. They will negotiate the price of their freedom with the person who bought them. The price will be based on the number of years from the time they were sold until the next year of Jubilee, whatever it would cost to hire a worker for that period of time. If many years still remain until the Jubilee, they will repay the proper proportion of what they received when they sold themselves. If only a few years remain until the year of Jubilee, they will repay a small amount they will pay a small amount for their redemption. The foreigner must treat them as workers hired on a yearly basis. You must now not allow a foreigner to treat any of your fellow Israelites harshly. If any Israelites have not been bought back by the time of the year Jubilee arrives, they and their children must be set free at that time. For the people of Israel belong to me. They are my servants whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Blessings for Obedience, Leviticus 26, 1 through 13. Do not make idols or set up carved images or sacred pillars or sculptured stones in your land so you may worship them. I am the Lord your God. You may keep my Sabbath days of rest and show reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you the seasonal rains. The land will then reach, yield its crops and the trees of the field will produce their fruit. Your threshing season will overlap with the grape harvest and your grape harvest will overlap with the season for planting grain. You will eat your fill and live securely in your own land. I will give you peace in the land and you will be able to sleep with no cause for fear. I will rid the land of wild animals and keep your enemies out of your land. In fact, you will chase down your enemies and slaughter them with your swords. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand. All your enemies will fall beneath your sword. I will look favorably upon you, making you fertile and multiplying your people, and I will fulfill my covenant with you. You will have such a surplus of grains that you will need to clear out the old grain to make room for the new harvest. I will live among you, and I will not despise you. I will walk among you. I will be your God, and you will be my people. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt so you would no longer be their slaves. I broke the yoke of slavery from your neck so you can walk with your heads held high. Punishments for Disobedience, Leviticus 26, 14 through 46. However, if you do not listen to me or obey all these commands, and if you break my covenant by rejecting my decrees, treating my regulations with contempt, and refusing to obey my commands, I will punish you. I will bring suddenly sudden terrors upon you, wasting diseases and burning fevers, that will cause your eyes to fail and, and your life to ebb away. You will plant your crops in vain because your enemies will eat them. I will turn against you and you will be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you and you will run even when no one is chasing you. And if in spite of all this you still disobey me, I will punish you seven times over for your sins. I will break your proud spirit by making the skies as unyielding as iron and the earth as hard as bronze. All your work will be for nothing, for your land will yield no crops and your trees will bear no fruit. If even then you remain hostile toward me and refuse to obey me, I will inflict disaster on you seven times over for your sins. I will send wild animals that will rob you of your children and destroy your livestock. Your numbers will dwindle and your roads will be deserted. And if you fail to learn the lesson and continue your hostility toward me, then I myself will be hostile toward you. I will personally strike you with calamity seven times over for your sins. 
I will send armies against you to carry out the curse of the covenant you have broken. When you run, in, when you run to your towns for safety, I will send a plague to destroy you there, and you will be handed over to your enemies. I will destroy your food supply so that ten women will need only one oven to bake bread for their families. They will ration your food by weight, and though you have food to eat, you will not be satisfied. If in spite of all this you still refuse to listen and still remain hostile toward me, then I will give full vent to my hostility. I myself will punish you seven times over for your sins. Then you will eat the flesh of your own sons and daughters. I will destroy your pagan shrines and knock down your places of worship. I will leave your lifeless corpses piled on top of your lifeless idols, and I will despise you. I will make your cities desolate and destroy your places of pagan worship. I will take no pleasure in your offerings that should be a pleasing aroma to me. Yes, I myself will devastate your land, and your enemies who come to occupy it will be appalled at what they see. I will scatter you among the nations and bring out my sword against you. Your land will become desolate, and your cities will lie in ruins. Then at last the land will enjoy its neglected Sabbath years, as it lies desolate while you are in exile in the land of your enemies. Then the land will finally rest and enjoy the Sabbaths it missed. As long as the land lies in ruins, it will enjoy the rest you never allowed it to take every seventh year while you lived in it. And for those of you who survive, I will demoralize you in the land of your enemies. You will live in such fear that the sound of leaf driven by the wind will send you fleeing. You will run as though fleeing from a sword, and you will fall even when no one pursues you. Though no one is chasing you, you will stumble over each other as though fleeing from the sword. You will have no power to stand up against your enemies. You will die among the foreign nations and be devoured in the land of your enemies. Those of you who, who survive will waste away in your enemies' lands because of their sins and the sins of their ancestors. But at last my people will confess, will confess their sins and the sins of their ancestors for betraying me and being hostile toward me. When I have turned their hostility back on them and brought them to the land of their enemies, then at last their stubborn hearts will be humbled and they will pay for their sins. Then I will, rem will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember the land. For the land must be abandoned to enjoy its years of Sabbath rest as it lies deserted. At last the people will pay for their sins, for they have continually rejected my regulations and despised my decrees. But despite all this, I will not utterly reject or despise them while they are in exile in the land of their enemies. I will not cancel my covenant with them by wiping them out, for I am the Lord their God. For their sake I will remember my ancient covenant with their ancestors, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt in the sight of all the nations, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the decrees, regulations, and instructions that the Lord gave through Moses on Mount Sinai as evidence of the relationship between himself and the Israelites. Hi there, and welcome to New Hope Reads. I'm Mark Roof, and we are delighted that you've joined us to share in the reading of God's Word. It's very important that we share this together and be in God's Word daily. And by the way, we'd like to invite you to join us here at New Hope Church of Christ anytime you get a chance. Sunday mornings, we have classes at 930. We have worship at 1030, and you can join us live or online. Have a blessed day.